Welcome back to another Supercoach video with me, JD. You're joining me for the round six review. And boy, what a week of carnage we've had to finish the first set of buy rounds. Uh, really was a wild one uh, with a fair bit to discuss. I will try and focus on, I guess, the strategy and what to do with some of the key players that have been out. Uh, but I've just opened this. I haven't looked into it in any more detail yet. So... Um, uh, we're going to be discovering the new DPPs as we go. I'm going to be thinking about trades on the fly as well. I haven't really put any consideration into it. I've actually had a pretty busy weekend with a couple of other things going on. Um, so just quickly then looking at the stats. Look, after a what top 500 round rank last week, I knew it was going to come undone. This is pretty bad, uh, but that's fine. Given the week, it felt like a bit of an outlier week. Those you can definitely recover from. And I think Carnage definitely creates opportunity so I'm not opposed to a bit of carnage. Uh, and then, yeah, dropped 500 ranks the reason as for the round, which isn't too bad, all things considered, really. All right, having a look over here at the team. Uh, all right. So quickly, uh, actually, last week's trades, let's go through those first, and then um, that'll help explain everything else. So I wanted to get Flanders in, which proved to be pretty decent. Got the 110, which is not too bad. Not too bad. We take 110. Uh, yeah. Um, so it was uh, McKercher out and, boy, I'm really blanking on the other one here. Who was the other obvious trade last week? There was so many of them. Sanders? Must have been McKercher and Sanders out um, for Flanders and uh, a rookie and I was... Uh, deciding between... Oh, sorry, Graham. Yeah, Graham. And then the last trade I had... Um, so uh, that was fine. And then once we had the Carol sub out, or like starting as the sub news, I mean, just subs on subs on subs, um, I made the decision to trade him out for one of either Combin or Nguyen. Um and I traded, decided to trade him over Clark because Carroll still had money that was worthwhile. I just figured Clark dies as an M11 rookie at this point. Um, but then doing so, I had to restructure my team in such a way that I couldn't field Reed, where originally he was on field along with Roberts. Uh, so he went to the bench, which then became an absolute nightmare because he scored a 147, uh, which you can't predict, but hey. Um, he was great. They absolutely killed Frio. It was like very surprising, very like good to see, I guess, that they can being competitive sooner rather than later. But yeah, that was not good uh, because I didn't have that score. So I traded then out Nuon um, to get in McAuliffe here, who was on the bye. He's on the bubble this week. Hopefully he gets a game uh, to actually take that 147 because effectively the, the equation came down to Kane McAuliffe plus like 90 points or whatever it would have been uh, versus like Biggie. And I decided I'd take Kane with the head start. And it's probably an all right move. I don't think Biggie looked particularly good today. I'm not sure he's a must-have trade-in this week. Not that McAuliffe is either. I think uh, Hugo Garcia looks like the best uh, of the lot. I think it's Hugo. Oh, I, I, now the two Garcias here, Riley and uh, Hugo. Yeah, Hugo. Hugo looked the best lot. Um, so yeah, that ended up being the trades. Very convoluted, but effectively it was McKercher, Sanders, and Carroll out for um, Flanders, McAuliffe, and Graham. And it meant that I only really got stuck with one of the sub boys left in Jai Clark. And yeah, he'll he'll just die. I mean, he should get dropped at some point. Um, maybe he comes back during the buys and can provide some useful cover then next time around. But is what it is. And then the other infor unfortunate thing was that to um, bench Closey. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, like this is just unlucky that both of these two got subbed out. So we'll uh, manage that in a second. Uh, all right. So through the rest of the defense here. So... Um, yeah, Sheasel definitely copped attention from Finn, which is why I was scared off like captaining him or looking at him as a captain option uh, in the week just gone. He still had a, a pretty big quarter, first quarter, but then they clamped him down after that. Uh, Ryan did not have a particularly good game. He did some okay defensive things, but uh, like, yeah, I mean, he was down to uh, like, you know, due to have a bad game at some point, just surprising that it was... Uh, against them. These matchups here in Bulldogs and Richmond um, still are right though, so hopefully he can bounce back. And then Dacos uh, was very quiet for the first half. Like basically looked like all similar problems to what we saw in um, uh, like pre-buy for him. But then for the second half was good, had another good uh, third quarter where basically just like everything he touched turned to gold. 
uh, and looked more like the normal day costs. So he's gone up 11 Ks break evens 95. I think he's going to be a trade target for many, especially with Essendon and West Coast in his next three. Uh, but it's still like which day costs you're getting. And it feels like um, he is almost like a cherry on top player for Collingwood at the moment where when they're performing well, he performs well rather than like being the reason they're performing well, if that makes sense. Like he came good once the, the pies had turned it around. He wasn't the reason the pies turned it around. Uh, Yo continues to be great. I mean, he won the medal, which probably should have gone to Reed. Uh, but yeah, he was very good in this game. Kicked the first goal, was threatening forward, doing great work, grunt work in the middle. So yeah, continues to go strong. Uh, he's going to be near 600k, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, he's almost priced higher than Dacos, which is very crazy to think about. He probably goes higher than him after this week. Uh, yeah, and then Massimo was uh, like did some nice things, but got subbed out in the third quarter as a tactical. Uh, and then Williams got subbed out at halftime in the Blues game. And it was for an Achilles knock. Uh, so he might be okay this week. It, like the interview that I that I read with uh, Cripps afterwards um, seemed to suggest that he might get up and play this week. So we'll see. Uh, and then Closey continues to be very good. He's going to make a ton of money. And um, there are like three probably rookies I'm confident having on field each week at the moment. And they are Closey, uh, Roberts and Reed. So definitely uh, one that you want to have around. Uh, all right, into the midfield. Uh, so Butters was the backup captain option this week against the Pies, and he delivered. I actually thought I was going to get a much bigger score than that, but he um, definitely like started to peter out after a pretty huge first quarter. I think the first quarter he had like 61 fantasy alone, and like normally that would actually translate to a much better super coach for him. But anyway, uh, Bont had a bit of a bounce back game. Stills continue to go down. He's like sub 650k now, 171 break even. So if you were someone that didn't start, I think you could definitely wait one more week. Uh, against Frio and then look to jump on to him in uh, Hawks Richmond. Actually, if you like avoided both Dacos and Bont in your starting team, went full value, like well done, firstly. Uh, and then secondly, I think Dacos this week, Bont next week is like bang, bang, two huge upgrades um, that you got discounts compared to the rest of the comp. So awesome. Uh, Steel, a bit like Ryan, finally had a down game, gave one of those up. I still thought he played pretty well, but uh, yeah, like... Uh, it was a weird game where Dog smashed him. So uh, all the scaling went early as well. Who did it really hurt? Oh, I think Marshall was the one where like he played all right better as the game went on, but it kind of didn't matter because he the the die was cast. Uh, so yeah, I mean he's he's fine. I'm not worried about Steel. Uh, and then Green is one actually probably I'm more worried about because he's had back to back like poor. Actually, like basically since he's by one hundred nine seventy two eighty two. Like I don't know what's going on there, but pretty weird. And he's against Brisbane that I can't remember if one is like easiest or hardest. I think it's the hardest for mids to score on now um, for Brisbane Lions. And his history against them is awful. So this is like a very big concern. Uh, but I don't know. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, Martin has defense. Let's go. Um, we're going to move him back there shortly. But yeah, he will continue to be good. He kicked uh, the game winning goal ultimately for this. Should have had more points, except that he is um, intentional or insufficient intent um, kick out the full. Gives you two clangers. So he got scaled down pretty heavily, which offset the game-winning goal. Uh, definitely has had less touches in the, the last two weeks compared to the two before that. But uh, overall, he's been yeah very good. Still happy to hang on to him. Uh, all right. And then uh, Fife. Yeah, his stat line suggested maybe he could have gone better than 90, but I think it, all of his really good work once again happened once this game uh, had been done and dusted. But I think he still continues to look good. Um, dogs uh, could be a little bit hard one, and then Richmond the week after. So 58 break even will probably hold Fife a little bit longer, especially given how poor the forward line is at the moment. Don't don't mind holding him. Roberts was huge, taking contested marks, doing great work out of halfback, kick-ins, the work. So yeah, definitely one that we're happy to field each week. Uh, and then, yeah, read. Actually, let's just hit the optimize button before we do anything else. Um, <laughs> they know they know Williams bench smarter than me. Uh, and then, yeah, of these remaining rookies here. So, um, yeah, Graham was good. Uh, I think he continues to hold as that fourth midfield rotation. I know they got beat again, but uh, I think he's continued to look okay. West Coast this week, so hopefully he can put in a big score there. Although, once again, we've seen West Coast midfield isn't the easy beat that it used to be so yeah uh yeah and then clark's uh i mean he's probably dropped i've probably got two dead rookies here now at m10 and 11 uh and then yeah marshall very disappointing after a great week last week just 
was not there at all. So it'll be interesting to see how he bounces back this week. Um, Port ran both Soldo and Sweet. So uh, Sweet got subbed out, I think, tactical, but it'll be interesting to see what they do there, whether they hold them. Um, I think Marshall's actually got a pretty good track record against Port, but it'll be uh, probably, well, it was pre-Soldo, obviously, and a couple of those are actually quite old now. Into the forward line, Heaney was good. Uh, Swans did well, but just the 98. Once again, like all these guys that have been riding high, Ryan, Steele, Heaney, all gave it back a little bit this week, which just, you know, it happens. Like there's variance in scoring. You get swings up and down. But yeah, it continues to be good. Hawks this week, so not worried about that. Um, Pal, I thought had a pretty good second half. Once again, scaling was gone at that point. Uh, yeah, um, he's still a keeper forward for me. Um, uh, five, we moved down there. Who did we, oh, they put Flanders into the midfield. That's really weird. Um, Flanders is an interesting one because he scored well, but I mean, he was still pretty average with ball use out of half back. Uh, it's funny how much criticism came for like Nick Martin for some of his ball use, but I feel like Flanders is just as bad, if not worse. Um, and Martin's actually cleaned a lot of that up. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see if people come for him next. Uh, Fisher. He had really low time on ground. Like I want to say sub 70. Uh, so he's like, he's definitely at the point where he could go and was one I was looking at trading last week. Um, I think originally actually I was trading him to Combin and then um, with all the trade updates, he ended up staying and I thought there was a chance Sheezel would get subbed. So Fisher would get more use, but really they didn't use him as much as uh, I thought they did. Actually, just out of curiosity, how did um, Kircher go for holders? Oh, a 34. Yeah, okay. I was, I was kind of worried about the roll, even if you got a full game. So uh, that's rough. One and four break even. I feel like it's still a trade now, like bleeding a lot of cash. Uh, and then Darcy, uh, like he was like okay, but uh, just didn't do anything once the game was like while the game was on the line, really. So I, he's a key forward that rucks a little bit. He'll have ups and downs. And I don't think having Lob in there helped as well. So it'd be interesting to see um, what they do if uh, Ewell Hagel returns this week and how they manage that. And then Cadman seems to just keep trucking on, really. 36 break even. He can stay a little bit longer now. Uh, it's like, honestly, it's probably going to be this game that he struggles to reach that against Brisbane. Uh, and he, he becomes a trade-out target next week, but so be it. Um, and then on the, well, they weren't on the bench, but now on the bench, Dempsey... Uh, he struggled in the rain, uh, definitely, uh, for this one. And just another game where he was slow to get going and then was good late, but it kind of like, yeah, his scoring was too far gone at that point. Uh, had a couple of chances for goals, had a couple of chances for like ripper marks he didn't take. He definitely still has this like ceiling in him where he could go 100 again, but it's quite tricky now because he's at a 66 break even, which is, I mean, it's a little bit below where he's... Um, priced at but they're in a hard matchup this week with Carlton with that said like Carlton uh did give up like 126 points to Sharp and I know um Dempsey doesn't exactly play wing but he plays half forward pushing up but you know so maybe maybe he's an okay hold for this week and then Wilson was good uh again I think I'm impressed by him every week so uh he'll be continue to be a slow burn, burn make some money uh I think that's pretty much the team uh interesting that they've not using a loophole, I've just gone straight. Um, Gorn captain this week. I guess it probably helps with my uh, projected. Oh, they're like not a low 2000 score anymore. It feels good. Uh, all right. So, what are we doing with trades this week? And oh, let's talk about some of the um, problem children first. Uh, so, if you've got Tom Stewart, I think you just hold. Uh, it is probably just a one week concussion. Obviously, wait and see for the news, but he's already lost the money. I, everyone else has got other bigger issues. So like you just, whatever, like hold him and hope he comes back next week. Uh, if you have Hayden Young, the news here was that he was um, sat in the last of this game with hamstring tightness, but it was just precautionary. So keep an eye on him and see what happens uh, because uh, if it is just precautionary uh, and he plays, then all by all means, but this is the type one that we've seen with Reed where it could spiral into something worse. And if he's out, two or three weeks and maybe you look at trading him um, of the ones with mass and William. So mass definitely wasn't injured and his break even is 45. So he is one that you can hold uh, like a little bit scary now. He's setting to top out. Um, so I don't mind trading him either if it helps. And then Williams um, similar boat, he's break even 62. I was thinking that he really would benefit from Saad and McGovern being out. So to get this like 33 is quite disappointing. Um, Cats uh, not the easiest matchup for defenders either. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 
I'm okay with people trading out Williams this week if you need to trade out Williams. Um, for the mid ones, if you still have Sanders, let's have a look. I have not looked at their break evens. 107. I mean, Sanders and McCurch are both 100 plus break evens. I would just trade. You can like try and persist with them, especially um, given Sanders has Hawks and Richmond, but he's clearly out of favor at the moment. So I'm not like keen to try uh, and take that gamble. Uh, without having a look at where Jackie Boy's at, 81, break even. So yeah, like once again, I think you can trade any of these guys on. I'd be fine with that. Clark, I wouldn't bother trading. There's not enough money in him. I just let him rot. Uh, who, did else, who else did I miss? That must, that must have been everyone, right? I don't know. There's so many subs, like just crazy. Uh, and then trading targets. All right, so trading targets. So um, I already touched on him a little bit, but I think Nuon like was okay without being great. He might get another game this week. He's only real good quarter. I thought was the third quarter once they move Combin forward, but I don't anticipate they stick with that moving forward. Actually, what did poor Combin score? Cause I think he is one that played really well early and just like should have got a better score than what he did. 55. Yeah, that sucks. This means he might top out quite easy. Uh, what did Meek end up scoring? Cause he got another junk time goal as well. Didn't he did a ton? 97. That's so good for owners. So good. Uh, so he's gone 81, 91, uh, 97 since. Up 80K, 72 break even. You can wait uh, another week until you trade him to like English, who should be coming down more, right? Even though English had a big score. 611, 177 break even. Uh, yeah, nice. Nice one. That'd be a good little sideways trade there. So yeah, and then uh, as I mentioned, I think Hugo Garcia is probably the... Uh, Best trade-in based on what I saw. Now, there is some risk here because the Saints have other people coming back. I think Dow it was a test last week and played VFL minutes maybe. Uh, you've got Hunter Clark. It's not too far away. You've got um, Zach Jones still hanging around as well, although he looks pretty washed, um, to be honest. So, yeah, I think Gussie is probably the one. Let's just have a quick look at uh, any break-evens here. See if I'm missing anyone obvious here that has a nice break even. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about like, do you jump on closey? Like uh, if you don't have him for whatever reason, get on. Um, I guess LaFayle, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name, but uh, is the interesting one because he had, I think three very average games. I think he was sub for some of these and then looked really good. Uh, the 108 against West Coast, even though they got beat up pretty badly. Definitely there's something with him there. I'm not sure I'd go go for him at this elevated price though, unless you're really not confident on anyone else on this list. Uh, uh, yeah, so Hugo said we covered off. Oh, Drury. So I was a little bit worried that um, Zohar coming back would take away what I saw from Drury in his first game. And I think that's pretty much what we saw. The hit up marks at like half forward, um, links in the chain kind of marks definitely seemed to go away. There was a little bit of that late, but yeah, just, I didn't see it nearly as much for me to be interested in him. Uh, and then I think part of the problem for maybe for next week is that we've now only got um, one downgrade option, I think in Riley Garcia. So we're getting a little, little bit dire here on some of these options. So might increasingly have to start taking risks on guys just, uh, just because, hmm. No, oh, anyone that went Kyle Loman probably was like, okay, 62. wasn't great. The weather was terrible though. Yeah, we've got a lot of guys that are, are going to have a lot of cash on them. And uh, I feel like the rookies are now starting to dry up people that we can actually trade them to. And this is always the challenge with boosts because you can hold on to the boosts, but if you don't have a rookie to go down to, if you can't double downgrade, it becomes a, a, an issue. All right, so what am I going to do this week? I guess we should talk about some trade-in targets. Um, there are some people that are close to hitting bottom and I think like Dawson is one of them. Uh, so 73 break even, he went up 16 K. I think he had like 140 break even and beat it, which was pretty impressive with his 168. I guess the question is like, is Dawson back or not? And I need to look at his heat maps, um, this week, but my feel was with crouch out, he was able to play one, um, more on more central, I guess would be, um, uh, the word I should actually use. So what I noticed from Crouch was he would often be the one that would come into the center to try and like take the the corridor, like be the corridor receipt, uh, which was always really funny because then he'd turn and kick it out to a wing, like 
10 meters away and ended up doing like a weird switch instead. Uh, so that wasn't great. Um, I felt like Dawson did a much better job and was able to pick up some more of those central possessions. He also moved back behind the ball and he was also clunking everything. So the the scary thing about this is he's had one really good game and it just so happens to be the week that uh, Crouch is out and he hasn't tunned otherwise. That's, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a worry, but I feel like you ha- kind of have to go now, uh, on him now. Um, he could maybe wait another week with his 73 break even, but yeah, uh, he's got North, so he could go, you know, pretty decent again, just given what we've seen on them. After that, two tougher matchups in Port and Brisbane, but then their fixture really opens up. They've got Collingwood, West Coast, Hawks, Richmond. So four really nice matchups there for mids in a row, uh, then leading up into his buy. So Dawson's definitely interesting. Uh, for those who are looking for a defender, I think we already touched on Dacos. Uh, I assume like Houston, some people have interest on just because he finally dropped his ceiling game. Yet to go sub uh, 100 this year. So it has been a pretty decent pick overall up at 600K. It's pretty pretty pricey to be honest. Um, let's have a look at some of these other mids. As I said, I haven't looked at anyone yet. So Merritt did, uh, even though he like went 109, I think, uh, he's got a 156 break even now after the weekend. So I would wait on him. Definitely wouldn't go there. Oh, Sarong was one I wanted to potentially look at. Uh, so he had a 117 against West Coast. He's now got a 123 break even, which is definitely achievable for him. Uh, 614k. That's a pretty nice price. Uh, Bulldogs next, and then Richmond after that. Uh, I think you could consider Sarong this week. Let's have a quick look at any other mids that are worth discussing. I mean, people ask about Rao, who had another great game. Uh, I just like, I think, try and find better value, guys. Not that Rao has been great. Oh, Walsh. How could I forget Walsh? So obvious. Uh, so this is a really interesting one as well. It's a bit like... Um, actually, I'd say it's different to Dawson. So Dawson, we've seen him play well, but it's been one game without Crouch. Walsh, we've seen him play two games, but the risks kind of don't change. If that back plays up and it feels like it can play up, uh, it either forces a trade, which is bad, but I think the even worse ca- outcome is that he kind of just plays through it uh, at like 80% and he ends up averaging like 90. And it's just like, it's so much worse. You just bleed cash. You never trade it out of him. Um, it's just like, yeah, really shitty situation. Okay, so Walsh, uh, Petrarca, I've got an eye on. He's got a 157 break even. Against the Tigers, he could hit it this week. So I like. I almost think if you really wanted to go spicy, uh, you would go there, but I personally wouldn't. Uh, I think Oliver must be really cheap as well for a similar reason. Uh, what's Dunkley at? Dunkley 603. Is their run good? Not particularly. No, okay, I probably wouldn't go there. All right, so I think those are the mid options then. You're really looking at maybe like a Dawson or a Sarong uh, or a Merritt maybe this week, but I, I think Merritt probably not. Uh, and then, yeah, if you don't have Bont, you're looking at him soon. You're looking at Petrarca, potentially Merritt. These are the guys you're looking for. And the forwards is interesting because we've had a bunch of people put their options up in the forward line this week, uh, which, you know, we've obviously struggled with. And it hasn't been through DPP. They were already sitting there. So Zorko is now up to 550 and he's got a 66 break even. The risk with Zorko is that he has been very injury prone, even though he got through a full preseason, has been tra- uh, like traveling fine so far. And he is 35. So yeah, that that's tough. Um, I thought some of these harder games might slow him up, but he's still gone well, you know, 130 against Geelong. And it was in the slop too. GWS might ease him up, but then I think this fixture looks all right after this. So it's the type of thing where if he was my last upgrade and I had injury trades, I'd have no problem doing this, but I don't really want to jump on him now. Uh, you've got Bolton that's coming off the buy, 556k or 557k. Um, he's gone, yeah, 119 plus in his last three. Uh I mean, he's the same price as Zorko, though. It's not exactly great. Uh, Caldwell is one that's had two really good games in Essence midfield back-to-back. Actually, well, he's got a 99, 99, 83, 129. So he's been, like, scoring all right. Up at 480. The challenge here is, like, what happens when 
parish fines for him if that ever happens, but more when Setterfield and Perkins return, which I think were both in the next two to three weeks. She'll also played um, in the VFL and had like 20 and two goals or something in the first half, something ridiculous like that. So does he still hold this midfield role or does he get pushed more half forward and then that does that kill him as a pick? This is probably too risky for me. Uh, maybe more a fantasy selection. And then Rankin, like, he was nowhere in this game uh, and then got saved by some good stuff late. I want to say saved, like, just he scored when the scaling was on the line, which was very helpful uh, for him because he could have easily ended up on a 40 that game. So I think that's probably a no. Uh, the other option, way down the list, where is he? Oh, I mean, we could look at Lukosius. He's had now a few weeks in half back, and I think he looked all right, um, to be honest. Uh, like West Coast and North and two of the next three. So, I mean, I, maybe you could consider Lukosius. He's 420k. The last one is Adams, who I need to have a look at what his CBAs were. Now, he copped a knock. So, he got subbed in his first game, then he copped a knock in this game late as well, uh, which I think meant he missed some time on ground here towards the end. But he's been okay. Same issue as all these other ones. All like injury risks. So what do we what do we do really? Uh because we we need to get some forwards at some point. Uh, Heaney and Flanders we like. Uh Jackson's still coming down. Powell we like. Fisher probably needs to go. And then I've only got one rookie I love fielding in Reed. Uh and I want to get rid of I want to get rid of others off the field. Very tricky situation. Like who do I field this week? I don't think it's uh Darcy against Frio. Uh, it's not Cadman against the Lions. And I don't think it's Dempsey. I mean, it might be Dempsey against Carlton. And then Wilson against Port. They're all terrible matchups. Oh, I've, I've got five. That's right. We, we'll, we'll solve it with five. All right, let's uh, get these on field. Okay, that's fine. I've only got Reid on field now. I mean, I probably should do something about Fisher, but so be it. And then what, what we've got in the midfield? Oh, and I've still got these, uh, this problem where I've got Wilson and Dempson here. I don't, I don't, oh, man, what do we do with trades this week? This is so awful. This is so awful. Oh, geez. All right, I, I've got no idea what I'm doing. No idea. Because uh, I'm, I'm definitely not, like, building... Oh, what do I do? All right, well, this is going well um, for trades and advice. So uh, I'm probably looking at Dawson this week, I think. Uh, it's It's got to be Dawson or Walsh, right? And um, I, I could even look at like a forward if I had the money. So let's just like start clicking trades on guys that could potentially go this week uh, and just having a look at money. I've got Fisher could go, he's at break even 72. Uh, we've got Dempsey could go, break even 66. Ambrosio and Williams could go. I mean, maybe Ambrosio can just last another week. Massimo D'Ambrosio. So we go Fisher and we go, I don't know, Dempsey. What does that give me? If I get like Garcia, I've got 630K for someone that Dawson. I think Dawson was much cheaper as 533. Uh, but if I boost one of these other ones, does it help? Not really. Oh, okay. I can see the crazy trade. I'll show you that. Um, can I boost? Yep. Activate boost. And then let me trade another one out. Okay. Uh, I've got Dawson in my defense. That's good. That's uh, everything's working normal there. So this is, I think, the crazy line. I trade out these three top price guys and I can get in like a, um, a forward, like a cheap forward. Uh, and look, oh, Haley Dale is in there. <laughs> I don't think, if, if anyone asking, I don't think I would. Oh, Bose has been good. Uh, so where was... Look, um, Three round average. Jeez, the coaches, you're really not selling yourself to me, are you? This is like like warning sign saying I should not pick. But I think, you know, I could do something. Is there anyone else above here that's actually worth owning? No. No. No, Ash has been like had a couple of good games. Yeah, so this would be the crazy line, I guess. This is like very aggressive. You go like Lacocious or something. 
he can't be selected as a defender. Who would have thought? I'm glad that that didn't go through. So yeah, I'm just short of like doing something better with this. Um, I mean, it would have been great if it was like Walsh and Dawson this week that I could have got in. How much short am I? 130K. I don't have any way to get that. So I may not even boost this week. Let's just cancel all these trades. Uh, all right. So who do I actually trade then? Because this is hard because Williams has got better. Like he could come good if, if you hold him. Same with Massimo. But at the same time, they've also served their purpose. All right, I'm. You know what? Uh, I'm. I'm wasting time now. So let's just put in a trade. It'll change, but I'll give you a flavor for what it is. So let's just say it is. Uh, Williams out. Uh, get Closey back there. Let's find like Garcia and then trade him in. Yep. And then I need to trade out like anyone for like Dawson, right? Yeah, it could be Dempsey to Dawson. Uh, if I want it to be Walsh, though, it has to be someone else. 576k. So let's say I want Dawson. Then it'll be like Fisher or it'll be Massimo, something like that. Anyway, that'll be trades for the week. Some combination of that. Let's quickly go over vice captain, captain. Um, nope, we are doing everything but going to the team. Uh, so I had a quick look at this and there's nothing that I really see that I like, uh, to be honest, at all. Uh, like at all. It's another week where it just looks pretty rough. I, I could see Ryan going big on the dogs for whatever reason as a vice captain, but I'm not sure I would go there. Um, Butters, I don't know what his record's like on port. Is it good? Uh, sorry, on on port, on Saints. It's not. He's got two sub tons. Like that That one was kind of interest me. But yeah, uh, his history isn't exactly good there. Oh, we should probably just consider Bont because, you know, it's Bont. I mean, yeah, he did a 182 last year on on them at Optus. Uh, and they're coming off a pretty bad loss. I mean, this feels like the type of game where it swings the other way, right? Like Freo bounces back after a really bad loss and dogs um, regress after a really big win. But yeah, maybe like Bont VC into like, I don't even know. Into Sheasel C. Do you trust him? Oh, maybe it's like, no, I, we're surely not going back to like vice captaining Dacos. I think Martin could be quite good at the MCG. Uh, were his good games earlier at the at the G? No, they weren't. Marvel at a letter of Marvel at a letter of all. Okay. Ah, oh, I've got no idea for Captain Taylor. I'm useless this week. You should not be tuning in to advice here. Oh, we've got Heaney against Hawks. Okay. Well, I think maybe that's your captain. Maybe it's Bon into Heaney. Uh, something like that it sets up well. Uh, I mean, you could look at... Um, uh, Gorn went 174 on uh, them last year, and he's been in insane form. He's coming off a bye. So I think this is the other option. Maybe you look at um, Gorn into Heaney or something like that. It'll be either be Gorn or Bon into Heaney. Probably Gorn. He's, he's been so big, such big ceiling scores, like perfect advice, Captain. All right, I think that might be me down for the week. Um, so just to recap, we are in... Upgrade season now, you want to be getting rookies off the field, getting premiums on. That is a goal to be doing that every week. Uh, I would hold anyone that's only going to miss one week or less. So even if Williams is just missing this week, no, maybe not Williams, not a good example, but like Stuart, Young, um, if they just miss one week for precautionary reasons, hold them, upgrade around them, don't worry about it. Uh, then uh, the trade-in targets don't look great this week. I think you're probably looking at McAuliffe or Garcia as really the two options. Then um, Nguyen is third if you're forced to. Uh, and Drury, I probably wouldn't touch at all, but we'll see what teams brings this week. Um, and yeah, keep running those value guys. Keep trying to upgrade. The vice captain, captain probably looks some combination of Bont, Gorn, Heaney. Um, maybe Dacos is like real outside or like a Sheasel type. Um, but yeah. He went 145 on us last year, Anzac Day. So there you go. Could be Dacos. Okay, well, that's everything. Sorry for rambling. Sorry for the lack of like really clear guidance on trades. I apologize. It's been, it's been a weekend. It's been a weekend. I hope you had a better week than me, and I will see you uh, for the next one. We will navigate this carnage, and we'll come out better for it. Peace. <laughs>